good morning dear students today we are going to see another practical that is quantitative estimation of glucose using anthrom reagent first we can have a look to uh, about the materials required for the practical first thing we need is anthrom reagent of uh, 1.03 normality its method of preparation is mentioned here that is we need to mix 0.2 g of anthrom and dissolve it in 100 ml of concentrated Uh, sulfuric acid uh, how to prepare a particular normality solution is mentioned in another video uh, is link i will put in the description box then the next what we need is a stock glucose solution of normality 0.07 and the for preparing that uh, in 100 ml we need to take 0.1 gram of uh, glucose and dissolve in 100 ml distilled water that is a stock solution from the this that stock solution we need to prepare a working uh, solution glucose uh, glucose working solution we need to prepare for preparing that we need to take 10 ml from this glucose stock solution and make up to 100 ml using distilled water then the next thing we need is 6s2 uh, that is sealable labeled as 0.2 0.4 0.6 0.8 1 and test okay and uh, that is it is uh, representing the samples so samples of glucose of different concentration then for performing this uh, experiment we are using calorimeter calorimeter actually it is an instrument how it uh, measures the amount of a particular sample in a solution uh, is by We need to uh, quantify the amount of substance in a solution. Uh, this is done by uh, uh, measuring the absorbance of absorbance of a particular wavelength wavelength of light by this uh, substance that is present in the sample. by measuring that absorbance calorimeter quantify uh, or uh, find out the amount of that particular uh, component or component present in the solution okay that is a um, uh, that is a basic thing that the calorimeter is doing and what is this principle is that it works under the principle of beer lambert's law slow and regarding the this slow and uh, the um, parts of this calorimeter that also i described in another video is link also i will put in the description box anyway the concept is that uh, if the concentration of the solution concentration of solution uh, is high then the absorption also will be high or otherwise concentration is directly proportional to absorption that means if the light pumps through a concentrated solution of uh, glucose it will absorb more amount of light then in the in the instrument we are using so many filters what is the use of this filters if we consider a solution it will contain so many compounds and uh, this compounds have maximum absorbance uh, for a light having a particular wavelength if the same light uh, is allowed to pass through that uh, solution then that uh, solution can uh, absorb maximum level uh, so filters what they are doing is that it permit only that particular light of that particular wavelength to pass through the solution at the same time it prevent all the other light of uh, different wavelength that is not suitable for the solution that is the purpose so it is very significant to set to the filter before placing the sample in the instrument okay next we need to understand the principle of anthrone test in this uh, practical we are adding anthrom reagent to glucose that uh, that is taken in different concentration in test tube so i am going to explain that 
as we add anthrone reagent anthrone reagent to a carbo hydrate what is happening the concentrated acid that is present in the anthrone hydrolyzes this carbohydrate it hydrolyzes this carbohydrate to mono component mono saccharide units mono saccharides component mono saccharide units and after that this concentrated acid itself then catalyzes the dehydration 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 is the removal of water dehydration of this monosaccharides this concentrated acid again catalyzes the dehydration of this monosaccharides to uh, become either furfural or hydroxyl furfural it can be converted to either furfural or hydroxyl furfural okay uh, then these furfurals are formed if that uh, carbohydrates are pentoses and hydroxy furfural fer is formed when that uh, carbohydrates are, are hexoses okay then this furfural or if present hydroxyl uh, furfural uh, they condense with they condense or combine with Uh, by removing one molecule of water, it combines with the two naphthol. Naphthol that is present in the anthrone reagent and will form a complex. Its color, a colored complex. Its color is blue green. Sorry. blue blue green complex will form okay and depending on the amount of uh, carbohydrate that present in the sample that uh, that much will be the intensity or deepness of this color and uh, the amount of such complex in that sample we can quantify we can measure using you see uh, by measure the absor its uh, absorbance at the 620 wavelength using either a spectrophotometer or calorimeter so that is the principle of using this anthrone reagent for uh, determining the amount of glucose that is present in the given sample okay then we, we can start, start the experiment. experiment here we have taken six test tubes serially labeled uh, as 0.2 0.4 0.6 0.8 one uh, then one test and uh, one blank uh, blank labeled test tube and to all these test tube we need to pour uh, the labeled amount of glucose solution now we have taken the labeled amount of glucose in all the five test tube except the blank in the test labeled test tube we have taken uh, an average concentration somewhat uh, average concentration of glucose uh, solution and uh, in the blank labeled test tube we don't need to add uh, any amount of glucose and uh, uh, to all the other serially labeled test tube we need to make up to 1 ml by uh, adding uh, the additional amount of distilled water 
and also in the blank labeled test tube um, we need to fill it with the 1 ml distilled water only uh, by this time then we need to add 4 ml of andron reagent equally to all the six test tube after adding itself we can see a gradation of color in all test tube then let it cool for a while and after cooling it for a while need to uh, heat uh, yeah, by keeping inside the water bath for 8 minutes after 8 minute we need to take it out and again let it to cool when it sufficiently cool then we need to measure the absorbance using the calorimeter the calorimeter is plugged in and uh, set the filter according to the required wavelength that is 620 nanometer then the blank solution taken in the cuvet insert in the slot in the calorimeter um, by uh, giving attention that the uh, line marking on the cuvet should be in line with the uh, marking in the calorimeter then press auto zero to calibrate and to get zero value for blank then need to replace the blank solution with a uh, 0.2 standard glucose solution and again need to note the value uh, in a uh, paper then replace 0.2 with the 0.4 not the value then 0.4 need to replace with the 0.6 and the 0.6 again need to replace with the 0.8 Eight glucose standard solution taken in the cuvette. Note the value. Then point eight need to replace with the one standard one glucose solution. Note the value. And finally, need to place the test solution. Test solution and note the value. After noting all the values using calorimeter, we need to do the calculation. For that, first we need to fill the tabular column. The first column mentioning about the uh, different solution that we have taken for the practical, a blank and then a series of standard and one test. And then coming to the second column, it is mentioning about the volume of standard taken in each test tube. In blank, there is no. Uh, standard solution of glucose is uh, uh, added so uh, here it is zero then uh, to the first standard uh, we know that we have taken 0.2 ml of standard uh, glucose solution and likewise in all the other standard test tube and in the test label the uh, test tube we have taken 0 0.5 ml of uh, standard solution of glucose then coming to the third column we know that the working standard solution uh, we prepared is 100 ml and suppose uh, if we consider the first standard uh, we prepared the first standard by taking 0.2 ml from this 100 ml and make up uh, this to 1 ml using distilled water okay like we saw uh, the case of all other standards um, that means in 1 ml, there present 0.2 ml of um, standard glucose solution. That value we need to convert to uh, the value in 100 ml. That means in 100 ml, what is the ml of standard glucose solution present in each test tube. Okay, for that we just only need to multiply this value with 100. Then we will get. Uh, this this value 20 40 60 80 and 100 okay uh, that is the third column then coming to the uh, next column it is a volume of andron reagent that we added to each test tube that is equal uh, that is 4 ml each then coming to the next uh, column is uh, mentioning about the volume of distilled water there is no need of this so, uh, distilled water that is added to each test tube to make a each standard to 1 ml 
and the last column is mentioning uh, is um, uh, about the values that we obtained um, from the calorimeter as its optical density at 620 nanometer okay now we are going to do the calculation this is the amount of glucose in 0.6 ml of sa uh, sample uh, this 0.6 ml uh, we are considering uh, as the standard we are considering that that standard for um, uh, doing this calculation why we consider this one because 0.6 is the um, average value average value that we got out of the five standard uh, samples so its amount is 60 microgram and uh, again the concentration of the standard is uh, again 60 microgram then optical density of the standard is 0.3 nanometer optical density of test uh, it is 0.27 nanometer this concentration we uh, didn't know so that's what we are going to find out the concentration of glucose present in 1 ml of test solution first we are finding out uh, the concentration in 1 ml for that the equation is concentration of standard into optical density of test divided by optical density of standard. Uh, so 60 is the concentration then uh, 0.27 is the test optical density and 0.3 is the optical density of standard. We will get this value and then we are uh, finding out the concentration of uh, the glucose in 100 ml of test solution for that. Uh, first, we need to multiply this 84. We got here uh, with the 100. Then we will get 5400 microgram. Then we need to convert this microgram to uh, milligram. For converting this microgram to milligram, we need to divide this with the thousand then we will get 5.4 milligram per ml that's the value that we got here it's mentioned uh, here okay this is the value then next thing uh, we need to do it is to um, put a graph that is what i am going to show you next this is a only a representation of the graph you need to um, prepare using the graph paper itself Using the graph paper only, you need to uh, do this graph by taking concentration of glucose in x-axis x and optical density in y-axis. Then we will get a uh, straight line like this and um, uh, we need to find out the concentration of glucose in the test. Uh, test optical density we know uh, 0.27. So if we draw a line up to here and join that line, uh, with the x-axis then we will get uh, 54 microgram, microgram. Uh, the same value that we uh, got out of calculation okay then we can write the result as amount of glucose present in 100 ml of test solution by calculation is 5.4 milligram per 100 ml and also the, uh, the same value we got for the test solution in 100 ml by plotting a graph that's about the practical. I hope that everybody have understood the practical. Thank you. I'm a body, I'm an icon, man. I'm a girl about a ten. I should fuck her in the best.